Well, good morning, everybody. And it's been a couple weeks since we've had coffee, and I got a lot of catch catching up to do with you. So, um, last time we had coffee, I was telling you about we didn't know what was going on up north, and we weren't hearing anything. It was just like, don't come up until this date, because, right, whatever. So, we're kind of like, oh, what, what's going on? So, I went up independently and drove up myself with all my paraphernalia that you need for um, the startup for the year. And then my son and nephew drove separately because um, my nephew works for a landscaping, um, landscaping, what are they called, Com company. And my son works for them also. And they get these pallets, you know, they're the great big wood pallets that they bring freight or other things in. And, and some of them they can sell back and make a little money. Others, they just have to get rid of them. So we bring them up north. We have that giant fire pit. And we burn them up in the fire pit. And they make they make the largest, largest fire you've ever seen. You can see it from the lake some days if we put a couple pallets on. So it's a, and it burns fast. It's a um, high heat, big flame, fun fire. And um, we have so many pallets that we just put them on. And then we'll throw campfire wood in there with the mix. And so we always have a really good fire. So um, we got up there and um, they started unloading and the neighbors, um, Kevin and Anita, who have a permanent up there off the resort, came over and were talking to us and like, have you been in there? And uh, we haven't been in the camp yet. Well, apparently <laughs> this was the worst, most, 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 most infestation year that anybody can remember. Oh, what? So I thought, oh, I gotta go. Oh, I do not like mice. <laughs> um, so we opened it up. And how can I put this so it doesn't sound bad? We opened up, and when we went inside, it looked like a um, mouse poop bomb mm. <laughs> all over the entire camper. It was, ugh. it looked like there was hundreds of mice. I don't know how many mice were in there, but. It was like, you usually get a little bit of, you know, a little bit in your drawers and you get, you know, so we box everything up, we um, seal it up in Tupperware, we bag it all up, close everything up when we go, and then my brother Donnie <clears throat> closed up for me last fall and there's a couple things he missed. But it wouldn't have mattered anyway, because the mice got into everything. And it wasn't, because, you know, I have my old, old camper up there, my old great-great-grandma camper up there. So there's like lots of, I'm sure there's a lot of little holes outside that have signs that say, hey, come on in, here's the open into Mary's camper. So I always get some ice. But this was bad. They said it wasn't only the ones that were like, you know, permanents that were sealed up really good. It was newer camper. It was like everybody. It And it had, and I can't remember what, because I was like all ugh, freaking out about the whole thing. And um, she had told me it had to do something with the weather and um, something to do with the mice and the mice breeding cycles and but she's been coming up there since the early 90s and she says this is the worst that she's ever seen ever oh lord so we went and oh it was it was oh I, could, I can't even explain to you how bad it was but it was in every drawer on every cupboard and not just like a little it's just like how many how many of you mice were in here I don't oh, oh lord I, if they would have put like one of those remote cameras where you was bad it was just oh everything so uh, so the boys worked on cleaning up and sealing the wind took the broken glass out so nobody get lacerated and put something temporary in until they could get to Menards to get what they needed for that and then I um, cleaned off enough areas that we could use the camper and had all a place to sleep and then I'm like I and just getting, you know, you, you don't really have so much stuff. And I want to have, but I want to see what I'm doing in there. So um, we just did just the minimal amount and then decided to go down to the bar because we found out in the midst of all of the most poop explosion that um, the campground was bought by somebody. We knew that, so we didn't know, like, oh, what's going to go on. Um, so we went down, and he is a young fella. He's in his mid-30s, and he bought it, and he wants to keep it a campground. Oh Lord, we were so excited and so happy and I can't even tell you the elation that we all felt because we're all like, oh, I've got to find something else and somewhere else to go and what are we going to do and it's nice because the whole family's up there and then, you know, what if we don't end up at the same, you know, it's, it kind of keeps the family together in the summertime, which is nice. So um, he um, bought it and um, I, I think he got a pretty good deal on it and it was the campground with the whatever acreage that came with just the campground. So he 
um, purchased the bar, the tavern, and then the homestead, the house, and he says, um, and we kind of chit-chatted with him a little bit, and he said the house wasn't in that bad of shape, and well, not as bad as he thought it might be. So very doable for whatever he wants to do with that. And then, of course, the campground. So um, he is and was, or whatever, an electrician, because I think somebody who had skills like that is probably the only person who could buy the campground because of all the work that needs to be done, right? So we were so excited and we were so happy. <laughs> um, and that was his first Friday night was his first night, like running it and bartending it. And he's only, he doesn't have any help yet. And oh, good thing he's young. He's young and looks like, like he's very good in shape and a go getter. And the stuff that he had already done in the week or so that he had it, cleaning up stuff and getting rid of stuff. And so that comes to my, my old Bessie too, right? So. Good coffee today. <laughs> so, um, chit chatted with him, and we were just like so happy. Even down the bar, he got like a, a new jukebox and some stuff. And you could tell he's just starting getting going, but so we're just like all excited. Um, and um, so that was that. Did that and went and kind of visited with everybody and had our had our celebratory shot of Patron and um, a couple cocktails. And then we went up and. Um, I went up first and I got the um, fire started and got that all rolling and got because I just I thought nobody's gonna feel it and I'm glad I brought stuff that oh, we didn't need oh we didn't need it inside so then um, we had just hot dogs on the hot dogs on the fire and stuff and everybody went to bed and we were all up like at six thirty or seven we were up at the break of dawn we never get up that early usually probably because we've had too many cocktails and we kind of were late on the cocktails <laughs> when we got up there because we knew we had so much work to do. So get up and um, the boys take measurements and do this and that, what they need to do and kind of tally up what we need around the place. And So then they were out of there pretty mid-morning, mid they hit the road and then I thought, oh, how am I, how am I going to even tackle this? I couldn't even wrap my head around what I was going to do. So um, I gutted it. I gutted it from the, the back to the front. I just got everything and I threw out like four or five like of the tall you know the white garbage um, bags you use in your kitchen four or five of those and then um, just start I started pitching I just started pitching stuff and throwing stuff and um, getting rid of it because I just like some of some of it of course I you know brought home and Lysol deca decontaminated it washed it and all that type of stuff some things I just pitched I just thought you know um, since somebody bought the campground we will be staying so and I knew that if the campground got bought by somebody that we would be getting a different camper because old Bessie is old and she was um, sinking even more on the one side this year and we noticed the old Biffy outhouse out and back that was rare. and it's not that the walls rotting it's just sinking into the, it's been there for well after the conversation that I had with some people down there we knew it was like a 1964 or 60s maybe camper and that it was brought in maybe in the 70s or 80s. We didn't know for sure. Well, here one of the um, sons of the original owner, <clears throat> Bob, um, was telling me, he says, I can remember that when I was younger. So that camp camper has been up there um, for, I am so sorry. I'm looking at my dog and she's doing something. People are just driving by like crazy today. I know, sorry, sorry about that. So, um... He was saying that's been there like since the 60s, so she's been, no wonder, no wonder she's the shape she's in. She's been there for a long time. So um, we knew I was going to get something else because the campground's going to stay open, right? So, and, and we've been milking her for years, but we just like, we don't want to um, buy something. And we've been thinking about it for, I don't know, three to five years, but with everything going on up there we thought oh do we and then maybe that camper won't work in the other campground we're going to so we just like batten down the hatches fixed her up put some more paint on her and just rolled with where they was. so anyway um I was in the midst of that and it was oh everything was just like on the floor and outside and it was just it looked like a Something exploded in my camp other than the mold issues and stuff because I, oh, I had to clean it. And I think, oh, I found six or seven little, little mousy nests. Oh, oh, Lord. They didn't, and I don't know why, but they did not get on my bed, under my bed, nothing. My bed in the back room was, and like some of the furniture too, so they were just in the cupboards and counters and all that type of stuff, so... That was a good at least, right? But I still cleaned and lysoled all that stuff. 
Um, so amidst of all of this, then the um, new owner came up because he kind of just wanted to individually touch base with everybody and um, tell him, tell us all what his thoughts were, what his like a five year plan for the campground was, what his expectations were and all that, which I really like. I like somebody who's black and white and very um, forward and tells you, so you're not like, oh, what are we? And then I had told him the night before when we were down at the bar. And um, he goes, oh, you know, I've heard of my family. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what? But he, and I said, just so you know, I said, Luke, just so you know, I know, I know what my camper is and she will be hauled out. I am going, he goes, oh, okay. Because, you know, he knew I like vintage campers and this is, you know, vintage park model camper. But she's so rotted and she's so, oh, she's so sad. I had posted, um, reposted on my Facebook page uh, the little tour I took of her. And then if you could see, you could, you can see what kind of shape she's in. So um, he just said, you know, I want, every, you know, things like this. I, of course, want you to get a different camper. He had no stipulations on age of the camper that you got. I would love to find a nice, large um, vintage camper to bring up there that's in really nice shape and that look nice. But th there, I've only seen a couple. I saw one like four or five years ago. And it was a roller home and it was pristine and it was gorgeous and it was pink and aqua and it was like a park model large one like the one mine is but it was in beautiful shape right in the well, at that time it wasn't like we were looking i could oh, I just beat myself up about that because i thought why didn't you think and just put it let's go on but she was beautiful oh, she was beautiful and she was all original inside and she was in good shape and that would have been so nice but it is what it is what are you gonna do <clears throat> so um <laughs> So he's telling us, I said, I agree, you know, we had piles of this and that all over the place. And it was, it is that way because it, it's what the campground has always been and it's always what's been allowed. And um, I want everything neat as a pin, you know, it's everything neat around the campers and picked up and no piles of stuff. And then the boys had unloaded, I bet you, I don't know, 50 to 70 or somewhere's in their pallets off of the, um, they brought a very big flatbed trailer down because I really don't want any more pallet burning up here. Oh, <laughs> the guy's just unloaded all these pallets. I'm like, could we maybe burn some of them and just only load half of them? And he, like, didn't really kind of say, he didn't give me a yes or no, and he really, he's like, well, and I'm like, oh, I kind of, well, oh, okay, well, so can I, I didn't get, like, a direct answer, so I thought I wasn't sure how to read them, so the boys came back, and I said, hey, <laughs> And I told him, I said, I think we'd be get by with burning them for a couple weeks. And Rich said, you know what, well, let's just get them all out of here. If that's what he wants to do, let's just, what we want to burn this weekend is the last hurrah of the pallet burning, because um, we've been doing it for so many years, um, do that, and then we'll take them all back. You know, he goes, that's our, we loaded them, we'll load them back, I'll put them back. And he was okay, Rich, I mean, he didn't get mad, because I'm like, oh, Lord, I don't even want to tell him. But he was like, you know, we'll just load them back up. So they loaded all the pallets back up, and we did. We had pallet fires um, that afternoon, and um, we didn't even have any that night because we were so tired. I tell you, we didn't even do anything that night. We were so tired. So we did that, and we cleaned up around our camper, and then went over to my brother's and cleaned up his, and I asked him about questions like about what do you what do you want and what are your expectations and all that. And, you know, he only wants, of course, wood burnt in the fire. We've burnt, Lord, I, you don't even know what we burned in their fire ring. He just wants to keep it to wood, to natural, so that when you um, clean out your fire burning pit thing, <laughs> that it's natural ash that can be just tossed into the woods or whatever because it's just ash and not full of screws and nails. And, you know, the guys throw their beer cans and bottles and all that stuff, and they do it. They do it. They don't do it. And I always get mad because I'm the one who's going to take them out. But he goes, I don't want any garbage in there, and I just want wood burnt in the wood burning fire pits, which totally makes sense. And we're totally like, hey, we're on board with it. Whatever you want or whatever you want to change. And um, so it's great. We were just so happy that... We were just so happy that somebody took over the campground and we get to stay. And it's sad that, yes, we're going to lose old Bessie, but time to move on and get something new. And um, I just can't find any ones that are older or vintage -y, even into the 70s that are nice you know so i'm gonna oh, have to get something that's newer it won't be brand new of course um but um looking for a newer camper up there and i will just give her the the new camper the essence or you know bring up my vintage stuff and um honor my vintageness that way by um just having vintage stuff in it we um went looking for campers on saturday and we found one we liked and we were gonna buy it we were signing the papers 
and the fella came in and said, are you guys looking at the yada 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 camper too? I'm like, yep. Yeah. Because it's just sold. We got the paper printed and he was going to... Uh, that's how, I mean, it was gone. It was gone. And there are some other ones up there that I'm like, oh, that would be okay. This would be okay. But they weren't quite exactly what I wanted. And I'm like, no. I thought we're taking that step to getting a, a nicer, newer camper up there. So we're going to get exactly what we want. Um, and they're all over the place all the time. So we will just, we'll just wait. You know, she's all cleaned up and we cleaned up the whole exterior and got rid of pallets and old boards and old pieces of plywood up there and cleaned her up. Spiffy as can be, you know, she is what she is, but it's all nice and clean and picked up around there. And most of my brothers, and I know my brother Dean was going up, and I said, I started for you. Um, and I ripped down our old fish cleaning station because, you know, that was our, but that, it, it looks junky, it does. Clean, ripped all that down, and we just went to town inside and outside and just gutted it. And I thought, since we're going to be getting a new camper, um, I thought, okay, am I going to want this or use this in the new camper whenever she may be coming this year or for spring next for sure we'll find something in that intro we're looking so anyway I got rid of stuff that way also and then we threw out stuff outside and got rid of things outside and cleaned that up and we just so anyway by the time we did that and we did have a nice little um I think we just had brats we just kept this brats and beans we just kept it simple we're so tired that um I think uh we just hung out a little bit and I wanted to get a nap and that's how tired I couldn't even get a nap yet um my nephew my nephew my son Zach was up and he went for a little canoe ride and that was um, lovely and he came back from that and we were wiped and we were wiped by 8, 8.30. Everybody's like falling asleep and snoozing and not even, I'm like, are you kidding me? We're usually up late having campfires and we're all ready to have our last hurrah of the big pallet and we, we didn't even get her done. We were so exhausted from all the interior and exterior work that we did and um, windows replacement and cleaning and purging and binging and cleaning our stuff up and cleaning um, some of my brother's stuff up and doing all that type of stuff. We were too tired. We didn't have a big fire. So we decided, you know what, let's have, get up and have a nice breakfast. Um, make a nice pot of coffee up north. And then we had breakfast outside around the campfire and finish off the last of the Ever Palettes. And I did a little cute little video of that because it's kind of something my family has done for years. There's even been a few pallet dances through the years and whatnot. Oh Lord, I tell you. So um, that's that. So we're just keeping our eye out until we find, wouldn't that be something if I came across a really nice vintage one? You never know. Don't jump on something because something else might come up. So that's what we're doing. We're just keeping out, keeping going with that. Got her all cleaned up and she's all ready for the season and her last season that will be up there. Kind of sad because my mom and dad, you know, are the ones who scavenged found her for us and, you know, said that you could guys can stay in if you clean it up and they did a lot of the cleaning up out of that place when they had bought it so it's kind of like oh kind of saying goodbye when their camper um somebody had bought it and they used it for a few years and when they had removed that one and put it it was so sad not to look over there and see my mom because they were right next to us and um not see my mom and dad's camper right next door there that was kind of sad and um when they pull this one out um they're going to salvage it they they're going to what's it called um recycle it but when somebody come and takes the metal or whatever do that but since there's going to be contents left in it they have to salvage it out so that's going to cost me I don't know three or four hundred dollars to do but it needs to be done and I've, I got her free so I'll pay for that but I do not want to be up there whatsoever my throat's dry today um, so I'm not going to be up there for that oh excuse me <laughs> So um, that will happen whenever we find the new camper, and I'm going to try to, if it's too late in the season, I don't want to take up because you know, we kind of got a late start in the season this year because of all of the transitions up there. And I don't want to be, because when they salvage that out, it's going to be a couple weeks that I will not have that spot. You know, Luca's really nice. You could park your camper over here, you know, but I, I, I want to be in my spot, in my comfort zone, I guess, and stuff. So whenever they salvage it, it will be down for a couple weeks. So if we don't get it where we can do the swap out during a time that is not a time that we go up there too much, which is July. It will wait until the end of the season, and then that will give him plenty of time to get it salvaged and cleaned out. And then I suppose they'll kind of level it off and maybe put some gravel down for our new camper that will be moving in there. And uh, so that's that. That's what's going up north. Very happy news. We're so happy. We're going up there and thinking, oh, it's the last season. It's so sad and stuff. But it's just the last season for old Bessie. So got to move on, I guess, you know, whatever. 
so that's what's going on with that. Um, so next weekend, me and my husband are going to go up and just have a little kind of give it away with us. And I think we're going to take our puppy dogs with us. They like going up there. There's so many things to sniff around. And chipmunks, you kind of keep an eye on them. Um, Lily's pretty good. She'll kind of wander off with her nose even though she can't see. So you kind of, kind of keep an eye on her. Because even if you call her to come back, she can kind of come back. But if the wind's blowing, she can't tell where your voice is quite coming from. So you got to keep an eye on her. Maybe just keep them tied up like you're supposed to anyway, right? Yeah, that's what we hear. We'll take our leashes. We'll make sure, not our leashes, but we'll take our, what are those called? Outside cords. They're not used to them all. They get all freaky. So we put a harness and that on them because they're like, we don't wear these at home. What the heck is this thing that's whirling around my head? So we'll do that next weekend. And that's about all that's going on. So that was our huge, busy, busy weekend. And then, um... This weekend we just went looking for campers and we'll just keep our, you can buy them from Craigslist and sometimes it's a good deal, um, and but sometimes you don't know what you're getting because people want to get rid of whatever they're getting rid of and you might not um, be told everything, you know, so it's kind of nice to get it through a dealership because then they do a whole check on it, check all the electronics, everything electrical, all the gas lines, all the water lines, the roof, the slide out, so I said, well probably when do we do make our purchase? If it's not from somebody that we know or somebody we know know somebody that, you know, some type of affiliation that way where you, you know where you're buying that um, trailer from, probably get it through um, Dick's RV over by Arkansas just for the fact that it has all been checked out for safety things. Even though our camper up north probably wouldn't pass any test anywhere, but the next one we buy, we want to have it all checked out. And they get stuff, they said they sell... Um, five to six campers, they move them in and out of there a week. It is just busy. Like I said, that we were signing the papers and, oh, sorry, it's gone. So you got it. If you see something you like, you better go look at it and see it. And cause it might be gone that fast. So that's what we're doing is just kind of, we'll find something, we find something. And um, the season's about us. We finally get to start going up north and enjoy all that. And um, I did take a little peek in my little 19-foot um, nomad camper see what was going on in there and everything's fine not, not, no critters got in there she's clean she just needs a good dusting and a little wipe down and some reorganization um, for the season and she'll be ready to go because that's only um, a month away um, and I've been shopping for a few little things for that and because um, I want to have like little a uh, little basket and I got um, just for like giveaway for kids stuff to say you know you know child please take one and I got like old-fashioned our older type toys, so I got Play-Doh and yo-yos and those little, what's that mean to you? <laughs> those little whirly on a stick things, whatever those are called, I can't think of what those are, and like playing cards and some matchbox cards, and um, I'll have a little basket sitting out for the day of the rally for the kids to take one little, I'll have a little sign up for so that they can take one little item out of there, um, some little vintage treasure of some sort. Even though the kids won't know, the mom and dads will know that it's some little vintage thing from back in the day. Um, but it is a new purchase thing, but it was around when we were kids. So that's all that's gone on with me. Um, I thought I'd get my coffee in. It's kind of late in the morning. It's time to get going. Got so much going on. Do you ever get to the point where you got so much going on and so much to do and stuff that you almost like feel like you're spinning out, but you're not getting anything done or anywhere? That's the way you feel today. But I will. I mean, I'm, an, I'm a late night person when everybody lays down, take their afternoon naps for work tonight because everybody's on night shift tonight. I'll get a lot of stuff done at that point, kind of because the house is cleared out and it's kind of nobody like is getting underfoot and stuff. And I do a lot more productive work when I don't have to be in the midst of conversation because then I get lost of what I was doing. So everybody have a great week. Um, I will be up uh, at my lake place next weekend for with my husband. Maybe we'll get a little coffee in up there. Um, I'd like to have maybe a couple coffees up there because since it's her last, her last year, she should have a couple coffees. So um, take care, and we will see you next. Or let me see. Let me think about it. Next weekend's with my husband, and the next weekend's Memorial Day. So I don't know. Whenever we have coffee again, hopefully I'll get some quick little ones up north. And then who knows when I'll get them onto YouTube land for you. You know how that rolls. So take care until we have coffee again. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.